good morning from a very wet and cold Cape Town this morning it's the 27th of May and we're almost at the end of the level 4 lockdown or are we? in the news today government again postpones briefing to clarify the moves to level 3 now yesterday uh, in my last in the news article it was made clear how President Cyril Ramaphosa basically pulled the wool over the nation's eyes when he said that the entire South Africa will move to level 3 on June the 1st. As we found out since, in Zwelle Mkhizi's presentation to NCOP, the National Council of Provinces, he actually said, and I quoted him at the time, that we will not go to level 3 in all the hotspot areas, which are basically all the major metros. Certainly not something that Ramaphosa said in his address. And I'm sure the fact that they have postponed this briefing now means that they are scrambling to come up with something to please the public, because the pub public is not going to take this any, any longer. There are a few news updates this morning that I want to cover on some of my previous stories, including the case of Mr. Kosa, that was basically killed by the security forces inside his own property for violating COVID-9 activities, according to them. He had a beer next to his chair, and based on that, they physically attacked him and killed him. Now, you were still allowed to consume alcohol at the time, the same way that you are still allowed to smoke, but people are being harassed by the police who are not trained or mentally intelligent enough, it seems, to actually perform these actions and understand the law, which they clearly do not. <clears throat> so the first morning update I want to tackle is the Cuban doctors that landed all over South Africa. Now these Cuban doctors are supposed to be registered in South Africa. That process would normally take three months, but this is not the case with doctors that just landed, that President Cyril Ramaphosa said would actually go to these hot spots, these metro areas, and head what is being done in these metros with regards to curbing the spread of the virus. Now, it just sounds like a communist import to me more than anything else. The Health Professional Council of South Africa was supposed to have reviewed the curriculum of some international medical schools to help foreign trained doctors register faster in the country. Two years later, there is still no list and some doctors are sitting idle amid the COVID-19 outbreak. So how did they get these medical doctors to South Africa so fast and get them to actually function amongst us in a democracy with rules and regulations and laws governing people practicing? Now we have foreigners coming to our sovereign country, or are we sovereign? That is a question we need to ask. Are we a democracy? And actually imposing things on us that should not be imposed in any kind of democracy. But more on that later. Coronavirus morning, morning update, latest on cigarette ban, more on hotspots and testing backlogs. Your latest coronavirus news. Minister Nko Sazana Zuma is sticking to her guns on the medical reasons for the cigarette ban. We know that she absolutely hates smoking and she has allow she's allowed to feel that way. But she's not allowed to take your right away to choose if you are not affecting someone else through your actions. COVID-19 hotspots could remain at level 4 as the country moves to level 3 on 1st of June, according to the health minister, and an expert gives us insight into testing backlogs. <clears throat> then the news carries on to some COVID-19 deaths. And then we get to the Glenda Gray matter, which is something that I've already covered before. Pre Professor Glenda Gray, they were singled out as if she was an enemy of the country because she was willing to speak out against the fact that MAC actually meant nothing to the government. It was just window dressing because the government was not listening to any of their input with regards to any regulations. They were listening to the World Health Organization, not an elected body at all. They fall under the United Nations and these people are forcing their ways 
on us in this country. Remember that, like I said, the next time you go to the polls and all the political parties that supported the president in all of his criminal actions. <clears throat> Health Minister William Kesey considers a Professor Glenda Gray matter closed and denied that academic freedom and freedom of expression are under threat. This after she has been gagged by the Medical Research Council, of whom she is the president. So the board gagged the president. Why don't they then fire her or remove her or anything like that? Are they scared of the outcry? Because most people actually agree with her. She was just strong enough to actually speak out publicly. <clears throat> so, Zwilliam Kiese said, and it's so easy to say, there is no basis to suggest any interference with academic freedom. Noting the fears expressed about the government clamping down on academic freedom, this is what Mkise said. So he says, there is no clamping down on academic freedom. Now you decide, when you tell someone to shut up, that they're not allowed to speak out, whether there's still academic freedom or not. This man is delusional. He should not be in government. He acts like a terrorist. He's terrorizing people. He, he, he should be removed immediately. Flamini, Zuma and Mkise double down on cigarette ban. Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Minister Mkosezana Dlamini Zuma stuck to her guns on the medical reasons for the cigarette ban during the COVID-19 pandemic and denied being friends with self-confessed cigarette smuggler Adriano Mazzotti, although she's been photographed with him numerous times at social functions, even sitting with her at the table. But they're not friends, they just know each other. How they know each other? I'm sure that we've seen that playing out in the cigarette market today. Health Minister William Kiese said it was not even worth debating the matter, and it could never be said that tobacco was an essential service. Well, it's not an essential service. That's not what it's about. It's about rights. It's about human rights, whether you agree with smoking or not. <coughs> okay, there's more... Uh, stories on people dying from COVID-19. Obviously, last night, President Soro Ramaphosa announced that uh, churches, mosques and synagogues will reopen on the 1st of June, but only for 50 people. So I don't know who's going to go and who's not going to go. Maybe people are going to take turns. None of this actually makes sense at all, because if you can perform social distancing in a church, you should be able to fit in as many people as you can fit in. So uh, the sense there certainly is not. And then I want to get to the Mr. Tosa matter, Mr. Tosa, who was actually murdered by the police services. And the fact that we are actually now having to change how we behave, the police, they have to change how they behave because of this judgment. And in this, in this judgment, it was made clear that the police has to change the way that they operate and a way should be made clear for us to actually report incorrect policing and where they're actually violating our rights, which has been uh, practically everywhere at this stage. So the, the fact that Mr. Tosa was killed by security forces is a, an extremely, extremely serious one. The fact that our rights have been removed, that, that his life has been lost. And it was not just him, it was many other people that have been killed by security forces. This was one of these cases that was brought before the court. But the, the big question is, why do they have to postpone this briefing this afternoon? It means that our president and his coronavirus council is in disarray on the fact that the president says one thing on Sunday, and then Ministers William Kiese says something else yesterday. So they are completely incoherent. As I've said before, we are not being led by a government. And the other, the other big problem is the fact that we, as citizens, don't actually understand our constitutional rights and don't exercise or practice those rights. We are not trained these rights, not in school, not in university. And this is deliberate. They'll rather teach our children sex education in school than teach them the law so that they can protect themselves one day when the government starts to violate their rights. And I will cover the, the, the COSA incident and the feedback on that when we get all the details from the court. We know that 
by today that the council that is headed by Nkosazana de Minizuma had to give feedback to the courts on the smoking issue and actually tell them what happened in the minutes of the meeting where they retracted the statement by President Silva Ramaphosa at the time where he said that smoking would be allowed again or the sale of cigarettes would be allowed again because smoking is still allowed. So the sale of cigarettes was supposed to return. It was retracted then by President Silva Ramaphosa and no reason was given and they refused to hand over those minutes. The court has made it clear that those minutes have to be handed in and that has to happen today. After that, on the 9th of June, the court case will actually start and Zwerim Kizi has actually made it clear that the matter is now before the court and this is where it will be decided. So they have made clear that your human rights that you have under our constitution has been violated. They don't care that it's been violated and the courts now have to decide. And this is a strategy that they've had from the start. This is a communist strategy with a, a, a slight bit of capitalism mixed in because even communists needs to make money to hang on to power. So in line with the Collins Corsa judgment handed down by the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria, the South African Police Service has added extra capacity it's to its National Service Complaint Center to enable the public to report allegations of wrongdoing by police officers during the lockdown. Now to me, that's not a good enough measure. Just adding a few people. People are battling to get through to that center as it is. I have received many reports of this happening. Uh, many of my friends in informal settlements have said that they have tried to call the contact center because of gross violations happening that's not covered in the media and they can't get through to the call center. The family of Kosa launched an urgent application after he was, after he was beaten to death, allegedly by members of the SA National Defense Force in Alexandria, Johannesburg in March. Now it wasn't allegedly, I actually saw the video and it was clear that the South African Defense Force personnel beat him to death in his backyard, in his own backyard. They actually went into his house and opened his fridge. People, you must realize that what is happening behind the scenes in areas where these people think they are in, in charge, these Defense Force members, and it is racial based. They feel more comfortable doing that in informal settlements or in areas where they feel people might not resist them. If they know if they try this in other areas, that they will be shot at or they will be taken down. That is for sure. And there will be, uh, the government will have a war on their hands. So they are busy with a very strategic action against the people of South Africa. And this is not acceptable. I will keep you updated on all these court cases happening on the cigarette ban, the update on the actions taken by the ministers as ordered by the court in the Corsa killing case. Please subscribe to my channel, ring the bell button so that you can stay up to date with all the latest news.